Hi, good afternoon. This is Raman. Hope you're well. Um, thanks for joining this session today. Um, we're going to be continuing our journey uh, you know, in regards to our discussion that we're doing on Unit 1, which is primarily on tourism and hospitality management. And in this, we are looking at, uh, you know, just a quick recap in terms of what we've covered so far. We've looked at, uh, you know, primarily the uh, you know, learning outcome one and learning outcome two. In learning outcome one, we looked at studying, you know, obviously the role of public sector uh, organizations in tourism. And uh, in learning outcome two, we understood the role of private sector uh, organizations in tourism and hospitality sector. Now, in the third learning outcome, we are going to be focused on, you know, understanding what, uh, you know, what is the micro environment and how does the micro environment, you know, affect the tourism and hospitality business uh, in general, uh, you know, from a point of view of uh, the sector and the industry. Here, there are two assessment criteria that we are looking at covering. The first one basically looks at, uh, you know, classification of factors or understanding the key factors which affect the businesses in tourism and hospitality, uh, you know, within the sector, the tourism and hospitality businesses, and what are the key factors which affect the micro environment. So we get into the definition of understanding what is micro environment, the factors, and how do we look at the tools to be able to use PESTEL as a, tech, uh, you know, as an analysis tool to study the, uh, you know, effect of macro environment factors on tourist, tourism and, uh, you know, hospitality businesses. So this learning outcome will then nicely lead into learning outcome four, which is going to be the next session. And in that, we will understand the micro environment and how does it influence the businesses within the tourism and hospitality sector. So put together uh, a few slides that I want you to uh, you know, focus on. And apart from that, what I will also be doing is basically sharing with you one or two studies which primarily have uh, been uh, you know, done in this uh, particular, um, you know, basically journals which have published um, which have been published recently, and they basically talk about, you know, the uh, basically the effect of, you know, macro environment in particular on, uh, you know, the businesses within the tourism and hospitality sector. And the other thing which I'm going to do is obviously give you a handout. Where this handout basically focuses on understanding how Western analysis can be done. And this is a handout that are taken from, uh, you know, the uh, tourism and hospitality uh, Congress meeting, which happened in 2014. It's an international body, slightly old, but it gives you a good enough idea in terms of how, uh, you know, most businesses look at, um, you know, analyzing or using PESTEL as a tool to make analysis in terms of how are the factors affecting uh, their business. So let's look at getting into the slides to understand uh, a bit of the learning outcome three. Now, I hope you're able to see the slide and obviously hear me well. If uh, you have any questions, be free to stop me there and then or ask me the questions through the chat route. Now, in, the, in, in this particular learning outcome, let's understand what does uh, macro environment mean? So when we look at understanding, you know, what is macro environment, um, we basically classify uh, macro environment as, uh, you know, um, factors which basically affect, you know, the business uh, which are external to the organization and to a certain extent, you know, this, uh, these factors or these, um, this economic factors, you know, this, these environmental factors are beyond the control of the organization. So when we look at the kind of, you know, um, if I, if I basically say, what is macro environment? Macro environment are basically factors which if externally affect the organization, uh, they are not in the control of the organization or the business within this tourism and sector and they to a certain extent uh, you know kind of influence the decision making and performance of the businesses should uh, should they affect this particular uh, you know should these factors affect a business uh, or a organization within the THM sector now these factors typically are classified on six broad types one of the factors are one of these uh, you know factors which have which I will go in a bit more detail are economic factors there are demographic demographics legal factors political factors technological factors and obviously natural forces uh, you know which could be uh, act of God as we call them or natural calamities uh, things like tsunamis earthquakes and things which basically affect the sector in general now let's also understand what are the six different types now these six different types can be classified uh, and easily remembered through a terminology called PEST, P-E-S-T-E-L, or 
That's D step, which basically stands, you know, for demographic, economic, political, ecological, social, cultural, and technological factors. Now, what we want to be able to do is understand how these factors affect uh, tourism and hospitality industry or businesses within this sector in particular. And um, the idea would be to try and understand what these factors, um, you know, individually, um, you know, how do these factors individually affect a particular business. So what we're going to do is at the later stage in the slides, what I've, what I've done is I put together, uh, you know, um, uh, a Western analysis that we're going to look at doing for Marriott hotels, and that will kind of detail out this concept that we're looking at covering. So the hospitality and tourism sector could be impacted by macro environment, and these are trends which are, or you know, um, uh, activities, trends, uh, happenings which are happening outside the business in general within the, uh, uh, you know, geography or economic climate, and they can actually affect the business. Uh, you know, or affect a uh, you know set of businesses within any sector. Now, these are called macro because they're external to the uh, organization. Organization or the business has very little control on it. An example here would be if your exchange, if the exchange rate of pound versus dollar or pound versus the euro begins to change because of market dynamics, uh, trading in the uh, you know market, or we look at uh, because of say economic activity, if the pound begins to fall, then it affects the exchange rate or, you know, the uh, exchange rate between the pound and the euro. And when you are traveling abroad on a vacation, you will generally feel that your pound does not uh, travel that much or, you know, does not buy that many services as it, as it used to in the past. So before Brexit happened, if you see the pound to a euro was one to 1.5, that means a pound bought a euro and a 50 cents. But now, because of Brexit, the uh, pound has dropped in its value, and one pound is roughly equal to one euro and ten cents. So this, as a factor, has is, is outside the, uh, you know, the control of the organization or businesses within the hospitality and tourism sector, and it affects not just one business, hotel, airlines, you know, any sort of services that we talk about these five broad services: accommodation, food and beverage, entertainment, you know, travel. Um, it affects all the businesses in this sector, and this is beyond the control of the, uh, you know, organization, and that's why they are classified as external factors or as macro environmental factors which affect the business uh, from outside. Now, if I have to classify, uh, you know, and we have to study these different factors in detail, well, let's look at one of the factors in particular, which is environmental factors. Now, there are different, as I say, and sometimes it's easier to remember them by using a terminology called, you know, defest or pestle. But let's look at environmental factors in a bit more detail to understand one such macroeconomic factor which affects businesses within the tourism and hospitality sector. Now, environmental factors could be climate, climate change. It could be policies, you know, change in green policies or rules and legislation, which the Government introduces in order to look at, you know, um, uh, changing, uh, you know, certain policies or regulations within a country. We look at disruptive forces in income inequality and economic uncertainty. So let's look at examining some of these one by one. Now, when I look at climate change, you know that the Paris Agreement, which was signed in 2015, basically looked at reducing the global warming as it is expected that the temperatures would rise by about two degrees. And that would mean, you know, there's some of these uh, Arctic, Arctic and, you know, the polar ice uh, shelves would melt, which would lead to the rise in sea levels. Now, this in general will affect tourism primarily in, uh, you know, uh, in places wherein uh, people travel more or less for, uh, you know, to sea towns or uh, beaches in particular, wherein these locations uh, or destinations in, in, in the tourism sector are very close to the sea level. So when you look at Maldives, when you look at Mauritius, when you look at some of the British overseas territories, when you look at some of the islands in particular, here the rise of sea level could be absolutely, uh, you know, drastic or um, you know, would destroy some of the economies in these locations because the rise in sea level would mean that, uh, you know, some of the activities and the tourism which these locations sustain would no longer be possible. So when we look at climate change, it would also refer to unpredictable events or unstable weather. Um, if you look at in the UK last, in the last couple of years, we've had uh, very uh, unprecedented heat waves which has led to a bit of water shortages or, you know, host fire ban in, in the UK. Now, these are changes which are unstable or unpredictable. And sometimes what it tends to do is 
last year we had a lot of people who did not travel abroad on vacation because they found summers to be much more pleasant and uh, you know enjoyable within the uk so that led to a bit of a fall in you know tourism uh, uh, revenues for countries like spain italy portugal and uh, you know southern france where in a lot of brits normally travel during uh, you know these summer vacations so unpredictable unstable weather patterns could hamper you know businesses for hotels in general within uh, within a particular area and that could also affect some of the larger level activities uh, or business activities in that area now when we look at green policies a lot of businesses in the last few years have come under increasing pressure uh, you know to look at maintaining certain standards which could mean you know the amount of uh, food going to landfill uh, recycling eco friendly uh, you know these are various terms that are kind of uh, you know the outcome of green policies uh, or you know legislation which governments have introduced across the globe in different countries now these have been done primarily to look at preservation of resources which could be you know for example uh, preservation of water which is a precious resource you're looking at tourism as an activity which creates a lot of waste um, and it leads to uh, you know obviously a nuisance in terms of climate uh, you know tackling uh, recycling or environmental uh um, you know recycling which is required in order to preserve the environment the location the city the flora and fauna in a particular city if you have been uh, listening to news and obviously um in tune with what's happening like in the city like barcelona in spain is now taking measures and the go- local government the, the is actually taking measures in order to reduce tourism activity to that area because they feel that uh, you know it creates unnecessary stress on the infrastructure the causes more pollution because of the operation of more taxis and you know more tourist activity which leads to you know um, pressure on resources which the residents in the city are not able to enjoy so when we look at green policies because this sector uh, you know uh, utilizes um, and provides a lot of services things like the usage of green bulbs energy efficient lighting you look at recycling uh, you look at some of these uh, activities when when you look at checking into a hotel it normally says that you know only use or recycle or uh, you know throw the towel for um, um you know for example for uh, a laundry if you feel if you must you need to conserve water these kind of signs primarily put in are because you know some of these resources in particular within this sector utilize uh, you know water electricity quite a lot and in order to make the sector more efficient green policies you know are introduced and sometimes when the upgrades need to happen within this sector when uh, you know say for example um um by 2030 the european directive is looking at uh, you know putting uh, some sort of a pressure on all the major hotel chains in the world is that they need to be able to produce most of the electricity required to run a hotel uh, you know through renewable sources so it could be solar it could be wind it could be you know um, uh, you know it could be other forms of energy which utilizes or changing the way energy utilization happens within the hotel by looking at moving to more in- energy efficient resources so it could be and that could mean or put pressure on business to in order for them to be able to change significantly you know the resources for example change of lighting to led lighting in order to reduce electricity bills um you know look at some of the other initiatives and these are all classified under what is called green policies when we look at disruptive uh, forces you know what disruptive forces what we mean is that when you see a new type of offering coming to this sector like when we look at airbnb when we look at these kind of uh, new offerings which come into the sector and try and disrupt the industry model you will see that the sector gets affected in general and this is also a macro environmental factor so when we look at uh, airbnb when they, when they introduced they introduced the concept of you know cheap accommodations that means you could rent out an apartment uh, you know house or a villa uh, you know by using a website called airbnb and here as long as you are able to pay that rent uh, you know it was significantly cheaper than booking hotels if you travel as family or large groups and that is where what has happened is that uh, airbnb has taken away a lot of market from some of the large hotel chains in a particular uh, you know location venue is because people find it much more uh, you know uh, efficient and in, uh, economical for them to be able to look at renting accommodation 
on on a, on on the basis of this website rather than booking you know hotels. So these kind of changes, which basically bring about a disruption in the standard industry model, would be classified as disruptive forces. You look at the onslaught of the comparison websites, which are able to sell, compare booking of holidays, airline tickets. This is something disruptive, and what has happened is that this has taken away more or less the travel and tour operator side of the market, uh, or kind of you know more or less caused the collapse of it because uh, now these services are something which have been caught on with the customers, and this has been disruptive for this uh, particular sector. So when you look at some of the hotel chains and others trying to you know react by uh, you know introducing counter product, counter offers to what uh, Airbnb and you know, sometimes these comparison websites do is their aim is to basically counteract the effect of uh, these disruptive forces, which is, you know, looking at, um, you know, disturbing the apple cart or, you know, changing the normal, which has been there in the industry. Uh, some of the other factors that we look at could be things like, you know, income inequality. And here, when we look at, you know, the gap between the poor and the wealthy is increasing. And the middle class, to a certain extent, is uh, you know is getting squeezed. So when you look at this gap uh, in developing countries, it is more in the case of developing countries because the rich are becoming richer, the poor are becoming poorer, and in the middle, the middle class is getting squeezed. Uh, you know, with the uh, uh, because of the increased amount of taxation or you know the uh, the policies which the government is looking at in order to collect tax. So here, when we look at this particular concept of income inequality. Most of the hotel chains, airlines, they tend to target is the middle class, the wealthy, which basically have the ability to be able to afford vacations or, you know, uh, look at uh, holidays. And that is where sometimes you will see that this also is a bit of a, uh, a external factor, because if we look at certain countries in which the middle class is growing, like China, India, there the sector is growing. But when we look at some of the other countries, which are developed nations, where we look at the middle class, there the middle class uh, is is uh, you know is facing a bit of a, a challenge because of the income inequality. So either the people in developed countries are on uh, you know some sort of benefits, or you see people who are uh, you know who have access to a lot of money, wealth, and they are able to afford it, and that basically puts a bit of pressure, you know, uh, you know, on uh, on businesses to try and change their model to suit the kind of customers they want to attract uh, for their service uh, for the buying of their products and services. Then we look at economic uncertainty. You know, sometimes when you look at Brexit, uh, a key point, a uh, key case and example, uh, you know, key example in this case as a point is that because of Brexit, there's a lot of uncertainty in businesses. Um, you know, whether we will leave with the deal, whether we'll have a bad deal, whether we'll have no deal. And that is postponing a lot of decisions which the businesses want to take in order to set policies, uh, you know, with regards to how, uh, you know, some of these things will work when, when, we are, when we are out of the European Union. So this also creates, uh, you know, pressures on the business. And this is not just for one business or uh, one sector. This is external to the organization in general. And this could be felt by, you know, uh, all the Companies or businesses operating uh, within within a particular geography. Now let's look at applying uh, our understanding of why the what is macro environment. Uh, how what are the factors which affect businesses uh, externally? Uh, you know, in uh, when we consider macro environment, we use one of the techniques or tools called Pestern analysis. Now this is essentially uh, a, a marketing tool or a strategic planning tool which a lot of businesses use to kind of plan ahead. Uh, you know, in terms of their business. And sometimes, you know, this tool is used in conjunction with, uh, you know, what you call the macroeconomic factors which affect. And the idea is to uh, use this tool to understand and, uh, uh, you know, detail out what macroeconomic, uh, macro environmental factors actually affect the business uh, within a particular sector. So what I've done here is uh, when we look at factors which are, uh, you know, when we look at PESTL analysis in particular, PESTL stands for political, economic, social, uh, cultural, technological, legal, and environmental. So when we look at individual factors, a business can be affected by, you know, some of these factors, and that is what has been classified, you know, in terms of the Pestern analysis. The Pestern analysis looks at all the key players which constitute a particular sector. So if I look at tourism and hospitality, you will see that in this particular sector, you have suppliers, competitors, intermediaries, customers, and when you look at, you know, uh, suppliers, suppliers could be hotels, airlines. When you look at who's using their products and services, it's primarily consumers who 
book tickets fly from one location to the other. When you look at intermediaries, these could be the comparison websites, tour operators, which basically are a link between the customer booking the flight, booking a hotel, and you know the supplier, which is the hotel providing those services. Competitors could be you know two hotel chains, two airlines. So these are all players which are a part of this sector. And when we look at that, what we try and do is understand uh, you know what kind of an impact uh, can a business have. Uh, you know, from these macro environment uh, factors, and what we do do is basically look at individual components to study uh, using this strategic planning tool, which is which is which is called festival analysis. So here in this image, if you see, this is a macro environment, and in the macro environment, there are different factors which are affecting the business. Um, they could be technological, uh, it could be international, which are economic, legal or cultural, it could be country specific, and then obviously pressures or you know, factors which affect from a consumer standpoint of view, or uh, you know, uh, when I say environmental factors, green policies, ethical considerations, you know, corporate social responsibility, those are then classified and you know you can break them up into individual components using Pestel as a tool. To do these and to do an analysis on understanding your competitors, your markets, and you know what kind of products and services can uh, actually be sold um, to your consumers. So let's look at by an example. What I've done, I put together a few slides, and in these slides, what I've done is I've chosen Marriott as a as an entity or as a business, and I've put together uh, you know a pestle analysis on, on the Marriott uh, you know hotels, and this. Uh, is going to be, uh, you know, applicable to understand the assessment criteria 3.2, wherein we need to apply best analysis to assess the macro environment on an a particular organization. So on the first slide, what I've done is I've given you some background about, you know, the Marriott hotels. Obviously, it's one of the largest hotel chains in the world. They have about 4,200 properties or 4,200 properties operating in about seven, 79 countries. They have 19 different brands. Uh, you know, within the Marriott, JW Marriott, Ritz Carlton, some of them are very luxury brands, uh, you know, and they have, uh, you know, businesses in different countries. Uh, they employ, um, you know, over, uh, I would say, 1.2 million employees. And at the same time, when we look at, you know, in terms of revenue, they have a revenue of, you know, um, slightly old, but they have a revenue of about $15 billion, uh, which is roughly looking at, uh, you know, renting out about, uh, 700,000 rooms, uh, you know, across their 4,200 4, properties. Now, what we're going to be able to do is try and understand how does uh, Marriott and the strategic team in Marriott actually utilizes Western analysis to, you know, understand competitor activity and the market activity. So let's look at this very briefly. Now, one of the political factors which can affect Marriott, now political factors which can affect Marriott would be, you know, things which are related to policy change, things which are related to, you know, dangers of, say, terrorism, international relation. If a country has, uh, if, if a country decides, like in this case, if you look at Brexit, Britain is coming out of the EU, there are some changes which are going to be applicable on, uh, on the, on the national stage wherein, uh, you know, if you have business, if Marriott Hotels has a business within the UK and uh, there are customers who come in from Europe to visit the UK and vice versa, they might need to apply visas or there might be, you know, other things which might be introduced because of the Brexit. And in this case, what it does is it contributes. These are factors which are political factors because it it is it is creating a bit of uncertainty because of the political climate, and this might lead to. Uh, you know, decrease in business or a dip in business for a certain amount of time. We look at other examples like, you know, the downing of the plane, for example, a uh, Malaysian airline in 2014 uh, at the height of crisis between Ukraine and Russia. We also look at, um, you know, when we talk about uh, dangers which, uh, you know, for example, Marriott Hotel or some of the other properties, you know, face um, um, you know, because of terrorism or terrorist-related activities, we've seen such events happening in Tunisia, in Morocco, in uh, you know, in, in Egypt, and where obviously this kind of an effect, uh, this kind of a uh, attack, which is more mostly related to terrorism, affects you know tourism and tourism-related activities. That means the there would be an immediate fall in the number of people traveling to that location. Uh, when 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 this kind of an event happens and that leads to the fall in revenues, not just for Marriott but you know for some of the other hotel chains in that area. The economic factors, if you look at, you know, a lot of these companies are considering uh, growing the business. 
and they're expanding. They're looking at opening properties or, you know, uh, opening new hotels or properties in locations where they feel there would be uh, more scope for business. So Marriott Hotel is strategically investing, uh, you know, in countries like India, China, the Far East, because they feel that this is the place where, uh, you know, the middle class is growing. This is the place where they see growth in population and tourism activity happening because of the economic uh, you know, prosperity now coming in some of these developing countries. But it also affects their business if they see slowing economic growth in China, they see slowing economic growth or turmoil in Europe, for example. And we had the financial crisis. You look at Greece, you look at Italy, you look at Spain, you look at, you know, some of the other economies which are dependent more so heavily on tourism were gravely affected because of the, uh, you know, fall um, uh, in economic activity and that led to a lot of uncertainty for you know hotels uh, and uh, you know businesses within the tourism and hospitality sector let's look at social and cultural uh, factors now when you look at your social and cultural factors you look at that you know marriott if they look at uh, you know what kind of an image they have what kind of uh, you know uh, reviews they get, how, what kind of customers is it able to attract, how is the culture of within the organization, are they able to, you know, localize some of the offerings to locations in which they uh, have, say, for example, hotels. Now, these are things which also affect how customers perceive the brand uh, in that particular geography. So when we look at social factors, we do see that some of these factors, you know, um, can affect the business. Uh, you know, for a hotel chain in a location. And this tends to be that, you know, in, in the case of hotels, they try and increase trend per customer, per traveler, renting out, you know, a room or, uh, you know, obviously staying in the hotel by introducing a number of activities which can suit the requirements and, uh, you know, the, the likes or even the preferences of the customer. And that is where, you know, when you look at social and cultural factors, this is something which steps into uh, the plate is that if, uh, you know, these changes, uh, you know, uh, if these changes are introduced or not taken care of, then it can affect the business uh, within the sector on a long-term basis. Look at technological factors. Uh, what we've seen is that a lot of, uh, you know, if you look at in the last 10 years, um, when we look at just one of the products within uh, the hotel rooms, when you rent out, uh, you know, and you go and stay in a hotel, is that the, the, the television and the entertainment, uh, which is a key part of the, uh, you know, service that you rent or you look at rental services within a hotel, this has changed drastically in the last 10 years. So when you look at you know, the old CRT-based TVs, then it led to the, uh, you know, flat TVs being introduced in hotel chains. Then at some stage, these screens started to become bigger because as they became more affordable, the industry, uh, you know, started to, uh, you know, have regular supply. We see now most hotels having at least a 42 inch or a 50 inch, you know, LED or LCD screens within the room. And they tend to differentiate the type of, uh, uh, you know, the services the hotel is able to provide. Some of these uh, services within the room also provide you an electronic dictionary, an electronic menu card, you know, on-demand movies, and, you know, obviously, uh, entertainment uh, through things like the Xbox and PS3, PS4. Now, with these kind of facilities being introduced, they are technological changes with the hotels are doing, and they are helping them attract more consumers uh, as against their competitors. And that is what differentiates uh, or, you know, uh, helps the businesses differentiate uh, using technological factors as a as a potential area. So sometimes you can see technology also facilitates electronic billing, invoicing, reducing the use of paper. Sometimes you also see uh, you know technology facilitating more rooms now to be booked and sold because the availability of books. Uh, when, I, when I say the availability of rooms online is now easily accessible to customers. It's within the direct reach because of technology. But earlier, these needed to be maintained on books. You had to physically call a hotel to be able to find out if the rooms are vacant or, you know, you have a, uh, you, you need to make a booking. And these things, you know, uh, are enabling uh, faster uh, adoption of, uh, you know, uh, certain services which brings in more revenue to, you know, hotels. So technological factors can be analyzed uh, by comparing, you know, um, what competitors are offering, what is offered in the market as a benchmark, and what they need to be able to provide. When I say the Marriott Hotel needs to be able to provide in order to, you know, uh, address and attract customers coming into them. 
uh, you know, to stay at the hotels. Legal factors, one of the, when Airbnb introduced these services, you know, there was, there were, there were a couple of legal challenges raised against the service. And one of the major legal factors that impacted Marriott's uh, future business was the status of these services, you know, available in some of the major locations where Marriott has, uh, you know, operations like in New York, New Orleans, Barcelona, wherein uh, after representation from Marriott, Airbnb was fined because they, uh, they were seen to be violating zoning laws or hotel regulations in terms of health and safety and other regulations. And that's where, you know, it was a bit of a bin for uh, big hotel chains like the Marriott, the Hilton, uh, by, you know, but in general, you will see the, that these kind of litigations which are brought across uh, because of the uh, way when you look at, um, you know, the new uh, players operate in the market, create a bit of a disruption, but that disruption also then leads to legal wrangling or legal litigations. And these litigations sometimes, you know, end up having, a, a, you know, a positive or a negative effect on the business. Now, obviously, a parallel example that I would take would be Uber, which has come in as a disruptive force and, uh, you know, kind of changed the cab, uh, cabbing market in, in the UK and all over the world wherein you are able to use GPS services to book a cab, uh, the type of cab that you want to book, the service that you want to get, uh, and, you know, whether you want an economy service, a premium service, or a super luxury service, these kind of things can be done uh, through the Uber app. But you see this app has been, uh, this particular service through the availability of an app has been quite disruptive for the cab industry in general all over the world. And that has led to the creation of also job employment. Uh, you know, there was a bit of a litigation that some of the, Uber drivers in London went to court to say that, you know, we also work on sociable hours. We do, uh, you know, uh, there's a cut which the company takes, but we do not get any employee benefits as a regular employee would get when you work, uh, you know, as a cabbie within a particular organization or a company. And then, you know, the um, Uber lost that case. They had to implement, implement and change certain policies so that, you know, some of the basic uh, things like pension, medical health benefits, other bits, you know, which were then have to be incorporated in their policies because of the legal changes in the battle on suit and obviously they lost that particular case. So you look at some of these things, you know, what we want to do is basically apply this in the case of barrier hotels to understand how this tool can be used by uh, businesses and organizations within the tourism and hospitality sector to understand and, uh, you know, um, break down how the macro environmental factors affect the business, affect their businesses. So with this, what I'm going to do is bring a close to today's discussion, and I hope you find this session interesting, because uh, the idea here is to understand uh, what is macro environment, how does that affect businesses within the hospitality and tourism uh, trade, and last but not the least, we need to be able to study, uh, you know, personal analysis and apply it onto our organization of working and you know offering products and services within the sector to see how it can be used as a strategic planning tool to understand markets and uh, you know competitors and the offerings which the consumers require. So I've, along with this presentation, I'm going to provide a copy of the handout, which is uh, you know from the uh, as I mentioned to you earlier, which is from the journal, uh, and that will give you a bit more uh, you know context to study and research for doing the two assessment criteria, 3.1 and 3.2, related to learning outcome three. If you have any questions, uh, any queries, please feel free to ask me now, or you can also email them to me through email, and I will uh, get back to you with regards to some additional supporting material to you know answer or uh, obviously look at providing more details to your query. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing